Hi, Octavia. Thanks so much for being a guest here today on the Simplifying Entrepreneurship podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here today. I'm excited for a conversation. I mean, just prior to getting online here today, we were saying you know, that business owners get in business to actually create the life that they want. And in order to do that, you need to make a profit. And that's why I'm so excited about today's conversation that we're going to have here all wrapped around profit and such a such a key piece of our business and often one that's overlooked by a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, as they as they struggle through some other frustrations, they may take their eye off the profit. And I love sort of your take on things today about why seven figure companies still fall short in profit. Yes, yes. Profit is so important. But as you mentioned, a lot of business owners, they're not truly focused on, as I like to call it, real true profits. And therefore, they often find themselves on this hamster wheel of financial trouble. Yeah, the hamster wheel of financial trouble. I like that. (laughs) Well, I don't like it. I don't want it, but I totally I totally have seen it in the coaching that I do as well. Tell us a little bit about uh Octavia, maybe the number one mistake that you see entrepreneurs make around this. The number one mistake would be pricing. And not just, you know, throwing a number out there, but pricing for Profit. That is a huge mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners make. So let's dig into that a little bit. I mean, I own some shoe stores as well. And when you're sort of at the mercy of your, like in my case, I carry a lot of branded products, they dictate the pricing. So they'll say, you know, you need to sell this shoe. Our, our, our suggested retail price is $140. And from that perspective, I if I sell it for more than that, people can search it online and say, "Hey, you know, why is why is Shootopia at one fifty, and I can get it everywhere else at one forty? So, what do you tell people who are kind of structured into pricing where they can't actually set their pricing, maybe where they think they need it? How do they, how do you work the other way around? Now, that is a really great question, and one of the things that you want to do is then look at your cash flow, right, right, right. and look at other ways that you can discover or uncover rather profits from inside of your business. So for example, maybe there are expenses that you really truly don't need and that money could then be saved and flow to your profits. Yeah, I like that. I like that term discover and uncover. I think those are those are two good words and I think we can all probably dig back into our books and look at that. And such an important piece you mentioned about cash flow. And that's another piece. I mean, you know, we're talking about profit today, but without the cash flow, without the money in the bank, even if there are profits on the books, and we know as as sort of financial people, you know, there can be profit on the books, but no money in the bank. And so tell us about what that looks like, what can cause that and what the problems are around that. There are so many reasons why this can happen. The first, if we take a step back, business owners have to understand that profit and cash flow are two totally different numbers, right? And as you mentioned, you can generate profit on paper and have what I call paper profit. And then you log into your bank account and you feel like, oh, where did my money go? One of the reasons is set around invoicing or collecting the money that is due to your company. So oftentimes you have paper profit because you have submitted the invoice, right? And on your profit and loss statement, based on your expenses, it could possibly show that you have a net profit. But then you look at your balance sheet or you log into your bank account and the money is not there or is not as much as you desire it to be. And that is because you're missing a key metric, which is accounts receivables. So even though you've invoiced those clients, they have yet to pay. So you've earned the money, but you haven't received the money. That's one reason why your profit and your cash flow could be two totally different numbers. Yeah, getting that money in is so, so important. I mean, in my uh, retail business, obviously, if you want the shoes, you pay for them. And so from that perspective, that's uh, that's a good thing for us. Um, But 
you know, I ran businesses for many years where they were service oriented, where we were billing our clients. And from that perspective, I mean, some, especially if you have a couple of big clients that are slow paying, that can be really hard on the cash flow. And, you know, a lot of time needs to be focused on bringing that money in. It's a really key piece of the cash flow component is bringing it in so that you can enjoy those profits. Yes, yes. You have to focus on closing the cash gap. And that cash gap occurs in the invoicing period, as well as when you send out an invoice as a small business owner, you are still operating your business. So you may still have payroll and other expenses that are going out and you're counting on this money to come in. But what if it comes in after the due date, right? Mm -hmm. Or what if it's not set to come in at all? So then you're in even more of a cash crunch in your business. So you have to focus on closing the cash gap as you're operating your business on a daily basis. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it. It's just so, so important. I mean, so many owners that I speak with, they're frustrated, they're overwhelmed, they're overworked, and they're out of cash. And those those kind of things, by by looking at a few of these simple things, getting that money in a little bit quicker, looking at how to um, structure your profit around your product and then your process. I mean, and when we talk product, we're talking products or services, right, Octavia? You know, it's it's all around those kind of things so that you can have the right people and enjoy the right profits. And when you get the right profits then you're going to enjoy a better life as an entrepreneur and you're able to, you know, take some of the freedoms that you want out of your business, you know, and, and, and love what you do. It's when we don't have the profit and when we have those frustrations, that's causing these issues. So from your perspective, I know you're a, um, a CFO and you do virtual CFO as well. Tell us, a little bit about how that might help somebody that's having sort of some of these either cash flow issues or uh, potentially profit issues and how somebody like you could help them. Well, as a virtual CFO, we take an introspective look at our clients finances. So we are not only focused on the revenue which honestly, a lot of business owners laser focus on the revenue, but then they leave the other money lines kind of out there on their own. As a virtual CFO, we focus on the revenue, the cash flow, profit, and taxes. So we're planning out how their financial position will appear based on those four money lines. And then we're constantly um, helping them shift the trajectory of their business and then we're holding them accountable. So let's say a client says, Octavia, I want to earn my first million dollars or I want to earn the next million dollars in my business, right? That's normally where they stop. My next question is, well, how much of that do you want to have left over in profit? Yeah, how much do you want to keep? <laughs> exactly. How much do you want to keep now Let's work backwards because that's going to require your cash flow is managed correctly, that you don't have money leaks, that your services are priced for profit, and that you are consistently watching your budget and your forecast. And as a virtual CFO, we handle all of that for our clients. And then we help them understand their finances. So we basically help them leverage all of that information to scale their business to the next level. That's awesome, Octavia. And I know there's probably a lot of people listening that didn't even realize there were virtual CFOs. So I think that was a good explanation here for us today as well. And, you know, uh, we are almost coming to the end of our podcast. Our podcasts are fairly short here. But I, before we hopped on, I went onto your site and I downloaded this wonderful spreadsheet that, uh, you know, has so much great information. I'm kind of looking at it here now. But Tell us a little bit about that and if somebody would like to get that, how they would do it. So on my website, and thank you so much for mentioning that, it is the Say Yes to Profits plan. And the plan is an opt-in, it's free. And when you download it, the sole purpose is to help you as a business owner gain financial clarity, control, and peace of mind. So in this plan is a plug and play a spreadsheet, I walk you through 
certain numbers you need to pay close attention to to understand the financial position of your company. And then once you have clarity around the financial position, you can make better decisions that will help you, as I tell my clients, log into your bank account and smile. Yeah, and that's nice. That's a great way to look at it. And I think a wonderful way to ta um, top this interview off, uh, Octavia. I want to thank you for spending some time with us here today. And I really uh, would love to have a chat down the road as well. So why don't you let everybody know your website and how to download this again before we call it an interview here today? Yes. So you can visit our website at Say Yes to Profits. Dot com and you can download the plan at say yes to profits.com forward slash plan. That's awesome. I want to thank you again, Octavia. It's been a wonderful chat and I'm looking forward to learning a little bit more about your business and I'll dig into the spreadsheet too. That's that looked pretty cool. I'm going to spend some time on that after our interview. Make it a great day. You too. All right. Bye for now.